Okay, so welcome back. Um, so in this last session of the day, we'll have two speakers. The first one is uh, Manas Kulkarni from ICTS Bangalore. So he'll talk about collective behavior of a family of Fowler models. Manas. Thanks, thanks. Um, so let me uh, first start uh, by thanking uh, Sanjeev, Manju, and uh, the entire team for this wonderful conference, and uh, congratulations to RRI. Um, so today I'm going to speak about collective behavior of a family of power law models. Uh, so I'll just uh, present my collaborators here. So uh, from past couple of years, we have been working. Uh, Sana was a, a visiting student at ICTS, now at Boulder. Jitendra, Saikat, and Bhanu are graduate students at ICTS. Abhishek and Anupam are colleagues at ICTS. Satya and Gregory from Paris. David Mukamel from Wiseman, and David Hughes from Princeton. Uh, these are certain some references, and we have some more ongoing works on equilibrium and dynamics. In terms of dynamics, except this last one here, we, uh, we uh, uh, there are not many uh, new results yet. So let me uh, start by giving the contents of the talk. Uh, so I'll first start with definitions and questions, and then I will present a motivation. Um, then I'll uh, discuss results for large n theory, where n is the number of particles. Uh, number of particles with this power law interaction, and how they arrange themselves and what kind of density profiles they have. Um, then I will discuss what happens when you take these power law models and sort of add barriers. And um, I'll discuss certain uh, quantities such as edge fluctuations, bulk uh, gap statistics. And if time permits, I'll discuss certain dynamical aspects like spatial, temporal spread of perturbations. So, so let me start with definitions and questions. So um, the system we are interested in is a bunch of particles which are uh, confined in an external potential, and they are interacting. So this is all to all pairwise repulsive interaction. And uh, what we assume about this interaction is that this is pairwise interaction. And when, the, uh, when xi minus xj is small, it becomes like power law. So the exponent, uh, the example that Herbert spoke about in the morning, 1 over sine hyperbolic xi minus xj square falls under this category. And with respect to external potential, uh, we can, in principle, study a variety of external potentials. And they should basically be bounded. Uh, and they basically, they should go to infinity at, as mod x go, goes to infinity. So, so this, is, this is the uh, uh, broad uh, model that we are interested in. So you can imagine that particles cannot come too close because there is repulsive power, power law interaction, they cannot go too far because of confining potentials. Okay? So uh, for external trap, uh, the most common is harmonic trap, uh, which is going to be the focus of my talk. Um, but we also have some results in quartic trap and double well potential. So these are very physically common uh, potentials. Uh, harmonic is very common in cold atomic systems. For quartic and double well, you can read this. Uh, nice uh, uh, thesis where they have uh, given uh, 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 good amount of literature on this double well or quartic potentials. And um, also, in experiments, you can realize almost uniform potentials, uh, something like box-like potentials. So for example, cos hyperbolic 
X is an example of a very flat potential which basically almost looks like a box. And this kind of uniform potentials, uh, box potentials have also been realized, for example, in Zoran Hatsibabik lab in Cambridge. Okay, so, so these are, this is the rough uh, uh, set of models that we are, uh, we are generally interested in. So what are the questions, right? So, so uh, natural questions are, um, so there is clearly an interplay between, at very low temperatures or at zero temperature, there's an interplay between confined trap and repulsive interaction. And you can ask, uh, how do the, uh, what are the configuration of positions of particles that minimize the energy? What is the macroscopic density in the large end limit? And is there a large end description of this model? These are some natural questions that, that arise. Um, and if you have considerable temperature, uh, which I'm not going to consider in this talk, you can have uh, entropic effects in addition to repulsive interaction and confining trap. But we'll stick to a regime where the temperature is small enough so that the entropy is not important. Okay, so now let me go to a specific uh, class of power law models, which is the Ries gas. This was already introduced in Satya's talk. Um, so here, uh, the external trap I'm going to consider as X square, just a harmonic trap. And the interaction is basically one over Xi minus Xj mod K, and the sine K ensures repulsion. Okay, so, uh, so please let me know if there's any confusion about this model. And uh, it's easy to show that K has to be greater than minus two, otherwise the model is not stable. So K can go anywhere from minus two to infinity. Okay, so now let me motivate why we are interested in this model. Okay, so, so let me, please let me know if there's any confusion because we are going to uh, discuss this model a lot. And K is the most important parameter that uh, I want, uh, that we have to focus here. So can I just yeah. This is a 1D gas. This is a 1D gas, yeah. So the particles are in a trap, and they repel via, via 1 over x m is x j mod k. Yeah. Correct. But yeah. Uh, they are uniform in their, their separation. No, no, no. That's, uh, that's exactly so. So I'm going to discuss that, yeah. So now the question is why we are interested in this model. So I'll quickly motivate. So there are some very special values of k, many, many special values of k. So one example is when k is minus 1. Uh, you see, if I put k is minus 1, this becomes the 1d1 component plasma. So here, um, I'm going to discuss this ag uh, again later, but these are just examples for motivation. This is an example where repulsive interaction and uniform trap, uh, they, uh, they have a delicate balance such that the gas becomes uniform. Okay? So this is k equal to minus 1. I'm just giving some representative values of k to motivate. Uh, the most uh, uh, sort of uh, well-known example is k going to 0. Of course, you have to take the limit carefully. And once you take k go to 0, you get the Dyson's log gas. Now, this is, of course, uh, it has been discussed in Gregory's talk. And this is related to random matrices and, and a lot of things here. Uh, if you want to uh, know more about this, you can also look at five YouTube lectures uh, by Satya on RMT and applications. Uh, and this is a very, very uh, well-known limit. And here, the size of the cloud is order root n. Okay? And it forms, the density forms like a semicircle, a Wigner semicircle. Okay, so this is one of the important limits, k going to 0. Um, another important limit is k going to 2. If I just put 2 here, this is the well-known Kaloshra moser system. So we heard a variant of this in Herbert's talk. So this is a very special model in the sense that it is integrable even in traps, which is very rare. It is perfectly classically integrable, classically integrable even in traps which are quartic, up to quartic polynomial potential. So it is integrable even in x power 4. And it is very well known uh, itself. And here also the size of the cloud is root n. And it also forms a semicircle. Okay? So, so this is another interesting limit. So then there are many other examples. Uh, k equal to 1, uh, 3d Coulomb confined in 1d. You have dipolar gas, charge induced, quadrupole interaction. So these are different values of k. And in the limit of k going to infinity, this actually starts looking like hard rods. Anupam, gave, uh, Anupam spoke about hard rods. So different values of k are very, uh, very uh, uh, relevant. Um, and not only that, um, harmonic trap is, of course, ubiquitous in experiments. Absorption images are very well developed. Uh, 
to study the collective dynamics of densities. And uh, very importantly, you have quantum gas microscopy techniques to probe uh, particles at the level of a single, at the level of a single uh, particle. So this is quantum gas microscopy. There are a lot of uh, very nice experiments where these techniques are developed. So, so I'm going to just motivate uh, this k equal to one example. So this is my last motivational sl slide. So, so this is an example. This is, this is an experiment where um, it approximately you can think of it as k equal to one case. Okay. So here, uh, here I present this uh, energy. If I put k equal to one, so this is this is approximately how you can think of this uh, uh, 53 ions uh, with effectively k equal to one. And uh, for these experiments, they say that between zero to three is in principle possible, but something like this is is feasible. Okay, so this is just this is just to say that long range interactions are 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 uh, quite uh, realistic, and hopefully, uh, some things that we predict can be tested. Okay, yeah. No, no. So this is I'm going to be talking only about classical systems. So I'm just saying that this is just to motivate, you know, and how these ions arrange themselves, presumably to exp to show the positions of ions. Some classical description could be sufficient. Okay? Yeah. Okay. So now, uh, so 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 there's a lot of uh, 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 literature where one can sort of see why this uh, general Ries gas could be important. So let us recall the questions. So what are the questions that we are interested in? What is the shape of the density profile when one tunes k? So you saw that when k is equal to 2, it was a semicircle. When k is minus 1, it was flat. And question is, how does it behave for general k? OK? And, uh, and can I get uh, these kind of profiles as some saddle point, uh, from some saddle point equations of a large n theory? OK, so this is, this is the first set of questions. And of course, later we will ask uh, more questions. So, so, <clears throat> so this is the, so is this uh, any, any qu questions so far? Yeah. Just, uh, so that we uh, a priori measure is just postponed? No, no, so we assume very low temperature. And we assume that we, these particles are drawn from a thermal distribution at very low temperature. So that uh, a priori measure is drawn the particles? Yeah. Um, no, so uh, Gibbs measure. Gibbs measure. Yeah. No, so, uh, so that, okay, that's an important question. So we, we, we work with a large number of particles when we want to do simulations. But we assume that you, are, you have a large number of particles. And temperature should be less than some n to the power some function of k. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah, so now I think I'll discuss the theory and then yeah, yeah. So, okay, so, so, so let me, let me uh, first present the answers for this. Um, so, so how does the density look as one tunes k? So typically, what are the two things that one is interested in? Typically, if the temperature is very small, the system has a finite support. So question is, what is the length of the cloud? And if it has a finite support, how does the density go uh, at the edges, right? These are the two, these are the two, uh, two things that you are interested in. And this is the size of the cloud. So it is n to the alpha k, where alpha k is given here. OK, so and how the density behaves at the edges is given by this gamma k. And gamma k is provided here. 
So, so this is the density. Uh, this is the density profile uh, for any k greater than two, my greater than minus two. Okay. So, um, so uh, two things that are important are alpha k and gamma k. I'll show the shapes uh, later in the next slide. Um, so, for example, if k is uh, zero, this is the log gas limit. Alpha k is half, so you have ln as root n, and gamma k is uh, half, so you have a one minus z square whole power half. So that's your semicircle. Okay, so so you can put alpha k and gamma k for different case, and you can see how the shapes look. Okay, is that so? So this is how alpha k looks as a function of k, and gamma k looks like a function of k. So so here uh, uh, there is one thing interesting that for every k between one to infinity, there is a k between minus one to one with the same alpha k. Okay, and same is the story with gamma k. So this is an interesting observation where. For every k greater than one, there is a corresponding k between minus one and one with the same density profile. Okay, so and uh, and I'll tell you where these density profiles come from. For, so I'll first present the density profiles. Okay, so for different values of k, so these are the density profiles. So let us start from the bottom right. So k is four. So it's one over x i minus x j power four. So you have this dome, and when k is two, it becomes like a semicircle. K is one is like your ions, so it is one minus y square. This is again log gas, which is again a semicircle. So, so k equal to two and k equal to zero have the same density profile. And then this is k equal to minus one, which is a one-component plasma. And this is k equal to minus one point five, which has this uh, U-shaped density profile. So it has an integrable divergence at the edges. Okay, so this is the density profile, and you can uh, verify. Those expressions that I provided by uh, exact numerics from uh, Monte from Monte Carlo. Yeah. These are summing temperature. These are some temperature. So let me just clarify this thing about this temperature. No. So we always assume that temperature is less than n to the power two alpha k. Okay. So for example, for log gas, for the log gas, temperature should be less than n. Okay. So if n is thousand, or n, so if n is two hundred and temperature is five. It doesn't play a role. So we always assume. So this is the important thing, and and uh, and you can see that for different case, you have certain restrictions on uh, what temperature regime you can work at, so that entropy is not important. Okay. So this is so so uh, uh, you can divide your K regime into three uh, three zones here. When K is greater than one, your effective theory is short ranged. Okay. So it's an all to all coupling model, but the effective description is. Going to be short range, and between minus one and one, we call it the weakly long range regime, and between minus two and minus one, it is the strongly long range interaction. So minus one point five, it is so long range repulsive that the particles want to go away, but because of confinement, they sort of start accumulating at the edge of the uh, thing. Okay, so so this is the density, and 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 it comes from uh, minimizing. Uh, uh, this action through some saddle point calculation, and let me show the uh, the collective uh, density representation of this energy. So, so for k greater than one, your effective theory is just rho to the power k plus one. Okay, so it's a local theory. Okay, and there are no fitting parameters here. The zeta k is Riemann zeta function, and k less than one, the effective theory is non-local. So you have rho x, rho y, v of x minus y. So you have a non-local theory, and you have a local theory, and k equal to one is local but marginal. Okay. So you take these uh, functions, you minimize this, you calculate the saddle point solutions, and you will get those density profiles that I showed. Another quick question: If k k is minus two bound, hmm. it's only for harmonic. Only for harmonic, yeah. Every quartic it will be k minus two. Yeah, yeah. So for uh, for every polynomial, there is a equally uh, equal. Yeah, that's that's an important thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is the whole thing is going to be for harmonic trap. Okay, so so the effective theory is local here and non-local here. Okay, any any questions? So this is the density profile for low temperature regime uh, from minus two to infinity when k is minus two to infinity. Okay, so now now the question is, what happens if I? So this is a recap of the density profile. Um, these blue lines are just to show the support. 
Okay, this is the size of the cloud. Okay. Now, question is, what happens if we put a barrier? Okay, so, so suppose I suppose I take a wall and I and I and I and I bring the wall and try to push the cloud. What would happen? Okay, so first of all, why are we interested in that? Uh, I mean, first of all, it is experimentally feasible in principle to have barriers, and it is going to be important in computation of extreme value statistics, which I will also show. So, so here is the uh, here is the description. So you see here. Uh, so let's recall that without a wall, uh, there was some for every k from one to infinity, there was a k from minus one to one with the same density profile. So, so now what happens when you have a wall? So it's very, in this case, you know what will happen. So k equal to infinity is like hard rods that Anupam was discussing. So if I bring a wall and I push it, the hard rod walls just get moved, right? And when k is equal to 10, you can imagine that the, the wall is going to push it and you have some sort of a truncated dome, okay? So, so the wall is going to push, and at the wall you have some finite density, but where there is no wall on the other side, the support is just pushed. Okay, but then quickly you will see that things become slightly non-trivial because what happens if particles start accumulating at the wall? Now, one more possibility is that particles start accumulating at the wall, and so there's an integrable divergence at the wall, and then there's a density profile, and you can have even more extreme scenario where particles start accumulating at the wall. And these particles form a supercharge and push the rest of the particles away to create a hole. So you can have all sorts of scenarios, and this is how it looks in the presence of a barrier. Okay? So these calculations are also fairly simple because you just have to uh, uh, you have to involve the position of the wall, and so this is the this is the wall. Okay? Of course, if the wall is outside the support, nothing happens, right? You start bringing the wall towards the cloud. So here you see that, okay, let's look at this one. Here the dome is truncated and the support is just pushed. Is this clear? Is the k equal to two clear? So you have some finite density at the wall and your support is pushed. And then at 0.5 and at zero, and, and here in this region, you have an integral divergence at the wall, but you have a finite support on this side. Okay, so, so particles accumulate at the wall and then you have a finite support at this side, okay? And then when k is minus one, it turns out that particles accumulate at the wall and the rest of the particles remain here, okay? So let us look at k equal to zero and k equal to two. Before, both of them were semicircles, right? But now they have nothing to do with each other. So if you put the wall, you don't get the same solutions, okay? And k equal to minus 1.5, is very interesting where you have particles at the wall, some finite fraction of particles at the wall. Because it is highly repulsive, this supercharge pushes the rest of the particles, creating a hole. So you have these different, uh, you know, highly non-trivial uh, density profiles uh, to, uh, to, uh, uh, to study which are interesting on their own. So is this, is this uh, reasonably clear? Uh, yeah. Both, both. So this is just a description. So you, you have the exact analytical forms in large n, and you can do Monte Carlo and for fairly large n, and then this thing. Yeah. No, no. So for example, here, here you see in k equal to 2, the left edge is pushed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The left, because the total number should still be this thing. So left edge is also pushed. So um, yeah, so that is the thing. And here you see, it's not only a hole, but you also have an integral divergence on the other side. Okay. So this is the this is the density profiles uh, in presence of a of a wall. Okay. So now uh, now let me discuss the other motivation where we we can in principle uh, in principle we can use this to study uh, extreme value statistics. Yeah. Uh, like, is there always a relationship of density on the left? I think if you keep on pushing it, they will probably all uh, they will eventually form a delta function at the wall. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, uh, in this context, hmm. if you instead uh, change the charge, okay, the value of 
What do you mean, value of the chart? Yeah. Oh, you mean that if it's J by R, you yeah. change J. I mean, that change is fairly, I mean, that may change. Uh, is that a trivial change? Or? That is a, that's a fairly trivial change. Because yeah. the, the reason I ask is the following. Hmm. Because if you take a potential, hmm. normally the way things are going to evolve hmm. under stress in that potential is going to be determined by the curvature of the potential or whatever as well as the interaction. And there's going to be a competition between the interaction and the curvature which uh, the potential um, exhibits. Right, right. So, and the charge would decide the curvature. So that is the reason. Right. Yeah. It, it, it goes into the, yeah, yeah. I can, I can show you the unscaled density profile where the charge, uh, where the value of the charge is explicitly there, yeah. Fixed number of particles. So it's canonical in the number of particles. Yes, yes. But the volume is in principle infinite. Yes, yes. But the density is in principle zero. Uh, I mean, uh, density is, uh, turns out to be of finite Quantum. support. So yeah. it's number of parts, but there is a terminal equilibrium. Yes, 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 absolutely, yeah, yeah. OK, so now let me, uh, uh, let me just uh, discuss some, uh, so, uh, some aspects of extreme value statistics. So, so one can ask, so now we are done with density profiles and density profiles in presence of a barrier. Uh, so now we will discuss uh, what happens to the position of the rightmost particle of this n particle Riesz gas for arbitrary k. Right? So let's recall some special values. So these are very well studied uh, Dyson's log gas and OCP. Uh, so typically what we are interested in is, is in the fluctuations of the rightmost particle. So here the rightmost particle is at around root n, root 2n, and then you have this typical fluctuations, and then you have this large deviation, left large deviation functions and right large deviation functions. Okay, so for both the, for, for example, for the Dyson's log gas, this typical region is given by the Tracy Vidam distribution, and left and right large deviation functions are also known. For the OCP, this typical region is given as, by a non-local uh, uh, eigenvalue equation, and here also the left and right large deviations are known. And these kind of things are extensively uh, uh, studied by several people, uh, many of uh, who are in the room. Sample examples of such EVS problems are, for example, in correlated random variables. There's a, uh, uh, a nice article uh, by Satya Arnab Gregory. Then Dyson's log gas have been ex has been extensively studied by David Dean, Satya, Gregory, and so on. There are many, many works. One, the OCP has been studied by Abhishek, Anupam, Satya, Sanjeev, Gregory. And, uh, and more recently, uh, you have the simultaneous resetting gas that Satya was talking about, which also is a nice platform to study uh, extreme value statistics of correlated systems. So, so, uh, so in some sense, the Riesz gas, which is definitely rich and correlated, is uh, a nice candidate to study extreme value statistics. So, 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 this is, so we are going to study uh, present results for the Riesz gas. And for Riesz gas, basically, you can sort of have this schematic. Um, and uh, and so so it's not always a dome, right? We saw that it can be U-shaped and so on, but this is just a schematic. And then you can ask the same question here. Um, we know typically where is the last uh, uh, particle here, and what are the left and right uh, large deviation functions? So so uh, so this is basically a summary of the result, uh, where the left large deviation function and right large deviation functions are known explicitly, but uh, for uh, for the for the Riesz gas, uh, we don't have much to say about the typical region because that's uh, uh, not an easy calculation. But we'll present numerics for the typical region. But uh, if you see the asymptotics of the last deviation function, you will see that even this model, the Riesz gas, also has a third order phase transition, and that's a very interesting aspect of uh, of the Riesz gas. So it also has a third order phase transition, just like Coulomb gas systems and uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, Dyson log gas and many other systems. So, so this is one of the, one of the interesting findings where you have, uh, 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 where you can analyze the asymptotics of the large deviation functions. And, and the typical fluctuations of the rightmost particle, these are numerics. So 
So you can ask what is the typical width of these fluctuations, and, uh, and uh, one can sort of get some uh, uh, precise numerical results for this. But uh, it's not, uh, but there are no analytical results uh, for the typical fluctuations of the Ries gas except in these very special limits. Uh, the large deviation functions uh, are presented here, and you see there is exact agreement between uh, uh, numerics and, uh, and theory. So just to keep color consistency, the red was the left large deviation function. So this is the left and right. And these are the three regimes which we demarcated based on uh, how the nature of the density profile is very different in the three regimes. OK, so, so that, that, is, uh, that is, I just want to make one comment here. Although we cannot say much about the typical fluctuations, uh, for k less than 0, we can use large deviation functions and, and, and take it all the way to the typical part and do some scaling analysis and get an idea of the width of the uh, uh, typical fluctuation. But that's just one use of the large deviation function. But that only works in k less than 0 because, uh, because there's a single scale in the problem. But anyway, that is, a, that is just a side, uh, side note. So, so we have these typical fluctuations and large deviations for the Ries gas. Um, so what about uh, the bulk gap? So, uh, so, so we also studied the bulk gap of the Ries gas, bulk gap statistics. And for example, uh, deep in the bulk, deep in the bulk, you can denote it as some i which is deep inside here. And this is the interparticle separation. This is the gap fluctuations. And, uh, and we have sort of, uh, uh, the 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 interpart the mean is uh, quite simple, but the fluctuations we have some conjectures and and we have how these uh, gap fluctuations behave as a function of k. Um, so this is this is gap statistics and this is uh, it's the, the rigorous theoretical understanding of gap statistics for the entire Ries gas is is not known at all. Uh, for, uh, but there are some very nice. Uh, rigorous results for the OCP case where gap statistics, full quantity statistics, linear statistics has been studied by, uh, and other things has been studied by Anna Flack, Satya, and Gregory. But here, this is just to get an idea of uh, what is the gap statistics and uh, mean gap of the of the Ries gas in the bulk, and in principle, one can do it for the for the edge. Okay, so this is analog of level spacing statistics in random matrix theory. Okay, so this is this is uh, one thing. Um, again, this is all done uh, assuming that you are at an effectively low temperature regime. Okay, so any any questions? Okay, so now let me just uh, end with uh, end with some. Uh, uh, as I was saying, that uh, we don't have much to say yet about dynamics of the Ries gas, but uh, we recently did some work on spatio-temporal spread of perturbations at very low temperatures. This is some uh, concept that Sriram had introduced, uh, uh, this light cone concept. So, but let me just tell you what the concept is. You basically start with a first copy with some uh, initial condition. And then you start with a second copy with the same initial condition with a slight difference at the center. And you just ask how these copies deviate from each other as a function of space and time. So this basically characterizes s spread of perturbations in space and time. And we started with a very ambitious plan, but we couldn't uh, do much. But nonetheless, we had some analytical results of these kind of quantities uh, in this work. Um, so this is just the algorithm. So I'll just go fast here. So, so basically, you, you, know, you write some dynamical equations. And if you are in some low temperature regime, you can get the dispersion relations. Uh, there's some analytical forms. And then you can calculate these. Uh, 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 spatio-temporal spread of perturbations, and you get something like this. This is how your light cone spreads in this Ries gas. Okay, so so, but this is a this is in a region where uh, we couldn't see chaos because the temperature is so low. But we can nonetheless see spread and you know spread of perturbations. Okay, so this is the kind of things which we try to study in this Ries gas. But uh, but uh, but what we noticed is that um, if you plot this. Uh, 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 d of x comma t, which is which was given here, this d of i comma t. If you plot it for a given time snapshot for different values of k, there is a convex to flat to concave transition at k equal to two. So, so we, we, these are some you know analytical results. We wanted to get analytical results here, but we couldn't do much in the uh, uh, in the high temperature regime 
uh, here, but nonetheless, we sort of could get uh, these kind of light cones that Sriram showed for these uh, non-reciprocal spin chains. So let me uh, just end here by concluding that we started with collective description of uh, and statistical properties of long-range systems. We showed results in presence of a wall and extreme value statistics. Uh, there is a very good agreement between numerics, numerics being Monte Carlo numerics, and analytical results, analytical results being basically uh, from saddle point solutions for field theory. And then we studied bulk gap properties, some spatial temporal spread of perturbations. Uh, we are also computing uh, full counting statistics, uh, basically statistics of number of particles in a given domain. Uh, and this is something which we are trying to finish. Um, so what I didn't talk about is crossover from finite range to all to all coupling. So I told you that in our model, every particle is coupled to every other particle. We also did some work with uh, Avanish and Anupam long ago on finite range systems where every particle is coupled to only few particles to the left and few particles to the right. So D number of particles where D is just order one. And later, uh, Saikat and Anupam uh, tried to interpolate between uh, finite range to all to all coupling. There's still a lot of uh, uh, open questions in this kind of how to go from finite range to all to all coupling. And um, uh, crossover between low temperature and high temperature is a very uh, difficult question. Here, not much is known except for the log gas where you can go from Wigner semicircle to uh, e to the minus x squared through, uh, through tuning temperature by using uh, this uh, parabolic cylinder functions. But nothing is known, uh, basically not much is known for the Ries gas. Uh, we are also studying uh, extreme dynamics, which is blast in Ries gases. And, uh, and I mean, this is a very long-term goal, but, but uh, certainly we uh, can think of active Ries gas. Uh, yesterday, Gregory spoke about these kind of systems for the k going to zero k's. So these are some of the outlooks, and uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mahesh. Questions? Yeah, so for the density profile, sometimes people uh, doing cold atom traps uh, use uh, local density approximations. Yeah. So you assume that chemical potential is locally varying yeah. Yeah. and extract. So how? So is there a range of K where that works and where that breaks down here? Or okay, so it's very good, good that you asked. So, so the point is, uh, so, so what is important here is if you naively write the collective density, right? You would naively write rho x, rho y by x minus y power K. Okay, but the point is this really doesn't work when k is greater than one. In k greater than one, there are the singular terms which are more dominant. So if you naively do LDA, uh, you would actually miss the most important terms. So for example, when k is greater than one, the important term is rho to the k plus one in your field theory. And that is not easy to see uh, from, the, from LDA. What is easy to see from LDA is the harmonic trap term, which you can write as x squared times rho. Okay, so that is, uh, uh, that is the, that's the answer. But so, so this is, uh, in my opinion, k greater than 1 is especially where you should be careful to use LDA. Yeah. Yes, Manas, when you discuss this OTOC problem for the risk gas, uh, you mainly discuss the short range case, right? k bigger than 1? Oh, yes. So that, that, uh, that, yeah, uh, that is very important. Yeah. So okay. I, we only discuss the short range case. We, there are some issues with k less than 1, even in the dispersion relation and so on. So that's uh, not clear. Even the low temperature regime is not clear. Yeah. But if you do numerics, do you see some different behaviors, um, qualitative different behaviors from, from the K? Yeah, so we, we just restricted. We started with analytics, and we saw that it becomes tricky if K is not greater than 1. So we never did numerics also. So, so yeah, yeah. So that's an open question. But the model is well defined. So you can yeah. certainly have OTOC in sure. uh, that regime. Yeah. 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 Uh, for the OTOC problem, uh, is there a, from lax matrix also, you expect the same kind of structure which you see in the plot you have shown k equals to 2 has a flat yeah. OTOC, but there is this oscillation which comes. Yeah, yeah. So I was wondering about lax from lax point of view. Yeah, so, so, so uh, as far as OTOC is concerned, k equal to, because it's integrable, uh, you know, in some sense, uh, it is not that 
interesting for OTOC case. But indeed, if you actually do the problem using lax matrices, you should get exactly the same answers. I mean, so so you basically so so just to uh, just to uh, uh, tell the audience. So so what, what, in the k equal to two case, the dynamics actually becomes very simple because of techniques using lax matrices. So instead of uh, simulating the particles uh, using Newtonian equation, you can you can simulate uh, motion of matrices and then calculate their eigenvalues. And those eigenvalues of those matrices turns out to be particles of k equal to two. If you do those techniques, you will get the same result. But uh, in k equal to do k equal to two, even at high temperature, you should not get any O talk. You should not get growth of perturbations. We didn't do that, but you should not get growth of perturbations. So in other words, the perturbations Mm, when k is equal to two, uh, you, you know, I, I think the perturbation should just uh, behave as if behave like perturbations of the Toda model. I'm not sure if anyone has done uh, that also. So, so, so. So, yeah. uh, a small uh, addition. Uh, so, when you talk about low temperature, you're saying this is a Hessian approximation of sorts, yeah. uh, and again, it becomes a harmonic chain, right? So, the dynamics it's still integrable. I, I'm wondering about this. Is the dynamic still? Yeah, yeah. So, 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 this is what I wanted to say that the OTOX, the OTOX that I showed you, really don't capture unharmonic effects. So that's why there is no growth here. There's only spread of perturbations. So, so because we do this low temperature approximation, this is this basically maps to a harmonic network. So we are basically effectively studying OTOX in a harmonic network with very non-trivial Hessian functions. But, but to do to really see or a nice OTOC uh, cone that, for example, Sriram was showing, we need to do high temperature limit of this uh, model. And I don't think anyone has done that for this, yeah. All right, uh, there's time for one last question, if there's any. If not, uh, let's thank Manas for this uh, meeting. Okay, so the next uh, and last speaker today is uh, Anirban Ghosh, whose uh, title is Diffusion Dynamics and Persistence Probability of an Active Asymmetric Brownian Particle in Two Dimensions. So, good afternoon. Uh, everybody and thank you Sanjeev for giving me opportunity to <coughs> present my talk here. So uh, my talk is basically diffusion dynamics and persistence probability of an active asymmetric Brownian particle in two dimension. Uh, the talk is basically uh, on the basis of this uh, two pa papers. One is published and another is in archive and uh, is <coughs> in, I mean, in, uh, in, uh, in publication, basically. So, uh, yeah. So b before I start, I, I am giving some introduction here. Uh, what about uh, fast passage and persistence, and how it relates? So, the uh, first of all, when a, a stochastic variable or uh, a particle, uh, the, uh, the position of the particle, uh, Brownian particle, is starting from some position or is in uh, or in initial position, and it starts evolving. And uh, it goes to some uh, and reference point we have, uh, if we have taken to some reference level. And uh, the particle uh, touching for the first time to that reference level is called uh, fast passage time. And the probability of uh, touching that uh, level is called fast, uh, fast passage probability. Uh, but oppositely, or conversely, if we uh, say that uh, the persisting uh, that particle to that regime before touching that uh, particular reference level, or in the case uh, we have uh, taken the origin as uh, most of the cases uh, as the reference level, that is x is equal to zero. So that has been taken uh, to, uh, so this persist, 
persisting, the probability of persisting that particle to that level before touching is called persistent probability. So basically, if we see that uh, the probability density of the first time at which process starts at x0, which is called ft, is uh, minus dpdt, which is dp means persistence probability, and minus uh, is because it's inversely uh, related. Uh, the more persistence probability increases, the more this uh, first passage probability decreases, basically. So <coughs> for uh, Markovian systems, persistence properties are uh, quite, uh, I mean, uh, easy, but for non-Markovian processes, this becomes much more harder to compute, both basically analytically to compute and find an exact expression. Uh, that is why the, uh, the very, uh, interesting uh, part of this uh, problems are basically non-Markovian ones. So these are the very, uh, very general and uh, very uh, important results by Satya and uh, Gregory, uh, where uh, the persistence probability of diffusing particle, spherical particle, of course, at x is equal to zero. This is uh, this is the exact relation they uh, found in this paper. Uh, so this is very. Uh, very good, uh, I mean, great uh, review uh, review article by Satya and Gregory. Uh, so uh, this is this is the persistence uh, probability expression, exact one. And in asymptotic time limit, they found that uh, this theta, th that means uh, it is, I mean, algebraically decaying, and this theta is half, which is uh, where this is the persistence exponent. So now uh, I will go to my uh, system where the particle is basically uh, has a shape asymmetry. And because of this shape asymmetry, there are two diffusion, uh, I mean, translational diffusion coefficients are different in uh, two different direction. Basically, in this direction, uh, uh, along major axis, uh, it will be like d parallel that has been shown here. And in this, uh, uh, along this minor axis, it is d perpendicular. And because of this asymmetry, there will be a torque and uh, stochastic noise as well, as well which, will, uh, which, uh, which will affect the particle to move uh, to the plane, basically. So this is, the, uh, this is the equation of motion along center of mass, of course, overdamped limit under body frame. So here, this Fx, is, uh, Fx and Fy are the external forces, uh, x, y component of the ex external forces. And if we take this projection of fx along this uh, x hat axis and uh, y hat axis, we will basically find this uh, Langevin equation in uh, body frame. And this is the rotational dynamics, uh, which uh, how it evolved. This tau is a torque generated because of this external force. And this, this is stochastic noise here. So this depends, uh, of course, thermal fluctuation, which is zero mean and delta correlated. So now uh, what we will do that this, uh, we will transform this body frame to lap frame. Uh, so here we can see that this uh, gamma x and gamma y, oh sorry, uh, here should be like uh, gamma parallel, gamma perpendicular. There is some nomenclature just. So this gamma x and gamma y are just gamma parallel, gamma perpendicular. These are uncoupled for, uh, uh, in un uncoupled form. But when we uh, take this transformation relation from body to lap frame, we will find that this will get coupled. And this coupled equation uh, where uh, this gamma bar, which we have defined as the average of these two, uh, uh, two diffusion, I mean, mobility, mobility uh, coefficients. And uh, this, uh, this, is the, uh, this is the difference between these mobilities. Uh, this delta gamma gives the shape asymmetry term and uh, will affect the uh, diffusion and persistence, so, uh, so on. So, so here, this mobility tensor, if you see, that, this, that, will, get, uh, that will get coupled, I have uh, said. So the, uh, this have, uh, has become the new form. And the transform, uh, transform fluctuation relation will also depend on this gamma ij. That is why that will also uh, 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 give some different uh, different nature than it was in body frame so these are the papers which are very uh, very uh, i mean important for spherical particle dynamics uh, by udna satya and gregory and several others uh, and this is the uh, this is very much review topic by solon uh, so now we will see the diffusion dynamics we'll just take the msd of the free part free abp of that kind of system if x if y will be zero in the previous equation we have shown and the general solution will only depend on the initial this active velocity and this uh, this uh, this noise 
So this will give this exact expression of MSD uh, along x axis and MSD along y axis. We will see that uh, this will depend on this delta gamma, which uh, will give the uh, effect of the symmetry here. Uh, and this theta 0 is the initial orientation angle, which basically the particle is starting uh, here. So, uh, so, uh, so, okay, right. Um, Simulation results are, uh, which I have given that. Right, so uh, so I think this has been misplaced basically. So uh, what I uh, can say basically, I can describe it. Basically, the simulation results we have found that uh, uh, initially it goes uh, diffu uh, diffusive, and uh, thereafter it will go some super diffusive regime, and after uh, after like t. Uh, greater than d theta inverse, where uh, time in uh, d theta inverse regime, greater than d theta, yeah, so greater than d theta inverse regime, okay. So, this will like go here and this, uh, there will be this term and then again this. So, this will give the, uh, like, t, uh, depends on t and th that will give this uh, diffusive regime and this will give this uh, super diffusive regime and thereafter in longer time limit that will give uh, again a, di a diffusive kind of uh, system. So uh, the fact we uh, uh, get here that for smaller time regime uh, an instantaneous diffusive regime will come and uh, if we approximate up to uh, t square limit we will find that this, uh, this two expression previously said that will go like uh, in this form uh, up to taken up to second order limit. And uh, for very small t, that means just uh, after starting the position, it will this term will dominate, and again up to d theta inverse, this t square term will, will dominate, and it will give them uh, some super diffusive regime. And again, in the uh, longer time regime, it will go to like again diffusive regime. So uh, that was the free particle. Now I will go to for the harmonic trap. So we have taken this harmonic trap as uh, a, a, a symmetric harmonic trap, and this kappa is the stiffness coefficient, and uh, the the, uh, the Langevin equation turn, tr uh, turns to uh, uh, this form. We have taken a correction. Uh, uh, we have seen that this uh, this becomes a non-Markovian uh, 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 process. And uh, here, uh, kappa delta gamma by 2 will give this correction term, where the uh, coupling is proportional to the delta gamma, which is asymmetry factor. We can write it in vector space in this form, basically. So this is the just, uh, uh, just transforming this equation to this form, basically. So to solve this one, we have uh, we have uh, we have used this trick, the, to use perturbative expansion method, and uh, this R zero term is the first order perturbation, and then followed by R one and R two. This R zero is non-Markovian one, uh, and then R one and R two. Uh, uh, sorry, R zero will uh, is Markovian one, and R one and R two will give as non-Markovian uh, one. So R zero, uh, this is the solution, uh, basic solution of this. Uh, th these three uh, three uh, equations, and we can get these uh, three uh, first uh, zeroth order, first order, second order, and to find out this equal time correlation, which is uh, uh, mean square displacement, we will uh, uh, we will uh, ca uh, ca we have calculated this uh, correlation matrix, which is uh, for forming by zero zero term and zero one term, and up to second order one uh, zero two and one one term, and uh, higher order terms has been neglected here, and uh, so. Now, for MSG along uh, x-axis, this, from this correlation matrix, it will come that x square, and uh, this x0, x1, uh, x1 term will come, and the higher order terms has been neglected, basically. So uh, this is the exact expression of MSG up to the, uh, 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 after some, uh, with perturbative method. And this expression, uh, if we put this kappa tends to 0, that means uh, like uh, stiffness coefficient is going to 0, and it is, uh, it is the kind of uh, uh, behaving like free particles. It will give the exact result for the free diffusion of anisotropic uh, ABP. All this. All this. Uh, these are. Point, yeah? yeah, I have given all. Please. One PPT PDT is there one more. Ah, there is all this one more. 
ಈ ಸಂಗೀತದ ನಿರ್ಧನ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಸಂಗೀತ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ದ ಸಿಮ್ಯುಲೇಷನ್ ರಿಸಲ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪ್ರೀ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ಹಾಂ ನೋ ನೋ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಐ ಮೇಡ್ ಸಮ್ ಚೇಂಜಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವೈ ಐ ಗಾಟ್ ಸೇಮ್ ದೇಮ್ ದ ಅಪ್ಡೇಟೆಡ್ ಒನ್ ಬಟ್ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೋ ವೈ ಇಸ್ ದೋಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ದ ಎಕ್ಸ ಎಕ್ಸಾಕ್ಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ರೆಷನ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೈಡ್ that uh, for the uh, mean square displacement for this harmonic trap and we found that uh, for different values of uh, different values of uh, active act, prop, uh, propulsion velocity this uh, kappa uh, i mean this uh, um, mean square displacement along x axis goes uh, goes up uh, this is for higher values of abp uh, uh, propulsion velocity and we will see that for after the certain time it goes like steady state and uh, it Uh, it takes a constant value in uh, in uh, harmonic trap this uh, these are simulation result in the solid line is the this analytical result i have shown uh, here so these are the trajectories you can uh, find this is for free particle and the here kappa is 0.1 and kappa is 1 uh, and the stiffness coefficient is increasing so higher the uh, higher the confinement earlier the steady state is achieved and more localized in this process so now when uh, we uh, want to calculate this uh, this uh, persistence probability we have to calculate this two time correlation basically for the gaussian stationary processes uh, so so here uh, two time correlation of uh, of the free particle uh, we uh, we got from the earlier equation we have uh, said that this is the exact expression but uh, the fact is uh, here t1 and t2 there will be a t1 minus t2 term that will give some non stationary dynamics here in the particle so make it uh, stationary we have taken a slight approximation that appro approximation when t1 very larger than t2 and that approximation will lead to this uh, uh, this uh, uh, this t1 minus t2 term uh, will vanish and we have taken this uh, two time correlation and uh, effective two, two time correlation for after this approximation to this one where uh, here d effective goes uh, like v0 square by 2d theta term will add and uh, 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 and delta d effective will give also uh, this term uh, so this is the non gaussian parameter because uh, because we have to uh, show that whether i mean uh, any uh, uh, before uh, calculating persistence probability we have to uh, see that whether it's uh, gaussian or or not so when we find, uh, we calculate this this non gaussian parameter we find that uh, at longer time this uh this uh, non gaussian parameter goes to uh, very smaller values and it like okay <coughs> ah so it uh, decays with t inverse uh, time so in the longer time uh, limit we can find uh, this as a gaussian uh, gaussian kind of process so uh, the way to calculate persistence the route to calculate uh, uh, persistence is through the non stationary two time correlation function and we use this lamparty transformation which gregory has used his in his paper uh, and of course satya uh, satya has used in his uh, science uh, uh, paper that uh, in long back okay so uh, this non stationary uh, correlator has been uh, transformed to stationary process by using lamparty transformation and then the gaussian uh, stochastic pro for the gaussian st stochastic process the persistence probability can be directly calculated using slepian uh, theory so this is the this is the special transform uh, special transformation we have uh, we have done uh, to uh, which is normalization and to use this uh, to uh, to, uh, to, uh, to get non stationary to a stationary process and uh, after doing this the rescale two time correlation becomes uh, this for free particle of course and uh, we take this uh, time transformation to uh, this form and uh, here after after this two transformation we get this uh, stationary gaussian process which is purely exponentially decaying and uh, now we will uh, we will use this slepian uh, slepian theorem which is a famous paper of 1962 uh, that uh, that uh, they said that for a longer time asymptotic time limit this stationary uh, correlator function will uh, be uh, proportional to that uh, uh, the persistence probability will uh, proportional to that uh, e to the power minus lambda t so so transforming back to the real time we will find this uh, this for theta, of course here uh, theta zero initial uh, angle is zero and uh, we get this uh, exact value of 
this uh, persistence probability for the free particle. So these are the simulation results for different uh, propulsion velocities. We will see that uh, when propulsion velocity is uh, increasing, this t to the power half pt is picking up, and uh, these are the uh, this this one is data feed, but this one is the analytical value. We can see that in the longer time uh, limit, the analytical value is matching with the. Uh, this uh, this uh, simulation values and we will find that in longer time limit t to the power half pt goes to constant which gives that pt rise to t to the power minus half kind of phenomena which is kind of again isotropic particle uh, the uh, exact uh, exact form formulation of the isotropic particle which uh, is found from uh, from such a paper yeah so this is uh, the thing t to the power half pt uh, will de uh, so in the longer time limit uh, it goes to decay like t to the power minus half so for the harmonic trap, we have shown earlier that that two-time correlation matrix. We have uh, we have taken up to first-order correction this correlation matrix. We have found these analytical results, uh, and after finding these analytical results, we got this exact expression that uh, which is uh, of the two-time correlation, where we got the uh, the trap constant goes some uh, 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 some uh, uh, transformation, and uh, it goes to uh, effective trap trap constant because of this uh, because of this still uh, propulsion velocity. And uh, this goes to the uh, value of the uh, I mean exact expression of the persistence in harmonic trap. If uh, these are the simulation results, so uh, so of course it is a log log plot. Uh, so this is for uh, uh, gr uh, greater uh, stiffness coefficient, and this is for uh, smaller stiffness coefficient. And we will find that uh, that uh, for I mean uh, from this expression we can find that uh, this. In harmonic trap, basically the steady state is achieved, uh, and so the uh, persistence probability decreases uh, very fast uh, than the uh, small uh, than the free particle. So these are the summary uh, I have taken. Uh, to, uh, uh, I have taken. Uh, I have. Uh, we have calculated this MSD and uh, diffusion dynamics of uh, the particle in both the uh, harmonic trap and free free particle, and uh, again two-time correlation and persistence probability, exact uh, exact persistence probability, and. Uh, and of course, the simulation results are matching with this uh, analytical results. So, uh, the, the, the talk is based on these two papers the, uh, and work done by Dr. Dipanjan Chakraborty and Sudipta Mandal. Both are from Aizar Mohali. Thank you. Thank you for Thanks. So, are there any questions? So, can you go to that slide where you're showing oh, the sure. diffusion coefficient and explain that since you didn't have a chance yeah, to? Yeah, sure. Uh, <coughs> yeah, this one. Okay. So, here d theta is smaller, and as d theta is smaller, uh, uh, smaller for a smaller time limit, it, uh, I mean, for a, uh, for a certain uh, longer time period, it will give uh, this uh, t up to t and then t square. And after uh, after 100, that means you can say t d theta inverse when the time limit is d theta inverse, which is greater than d theta inverse. Again, it goes to the diffusive re regime. And when we uh, when we uh, start increasing this uh, value of d theta, uh, uh, let's say here 0.1 and 1, and you can find that very fastly it will go to the diffusive regime basically. So, and this d effective comes from like uh, this is the value of d effective. We have found in, uh, it in persistence probability expression as well. This d effective goes to like uh, in the longer time limit the diffusion coefficient which uh, which arises because of that. So basically, in longer time limit, uh, an isotropic particle will show the again the uh, the nature of the characteristics of the isotropic particle itself. Okay. Are there other questions? Okay, if not, uh, let's thank uh, Anirban thank again. Thank you. So that brings the talks to the end, and I think Sanjeev will tell us what to do next. No, nothing much to say, but I just want to remind you that okay, today is the banquet, so <laughs> in case you have forgotten, yes. It's the same place where we have uh, lunch, uh, breakfast, dinner. Yeah. Okay. At uh, 7, starts at 7, yeah, okay. So if we walk. Yeah, uh, there are posters from now to the banquet. Posters will be here. Yeah, so, yeah, okay.